Good evening. It is August 26th, and we are doing a show on global co collaboration today. And we have with us um, two uh, teachers, one from Hawaii and one from Michigan. And uh, they will be talking about a project that they did uh, last year with uh, another teacher in Alaska. And we'll be, um, there's supposed to be another guest coming up, and we'll save that um, announcement for later if he does show up. Um, so let's go across the board first and see who we have. Um, Michelle? Hi, I'm Michelle Colt. I'm the librarian at Halekula Elementary School. Okay, Karen? I'm Karen Corbell. I'm fifth grade this year at Mountain View Elementary on the Big Island. Heather? And I'm Heather Gauck. I am a resource teacher in, on the west side of Michigan. Great. And Heather is going to start us off. She's kind of leading the discussion on a project. Could you tell us um, first what it was, Heather, and then anything you want to share about it? Okay. Um, yes. Um, it was a we decided to try out a mystery, well, a mystery video call. So we ended up, I, I was looking things up and they really were talking a lot about mystery Skype, but I had discovered Google Hangouts. And so um, we used Google Hangouts to do this, but it was a mystery video call. And I actually, I'll try to get the information um, to you, Linda, but I came across a, I believe, a fourth grade teacher in Wisconsin, and I think her name is Rip Purnell, um, or Purnell Rip. something Purnell like that. Rip. Yes, Purnell, Purnell Rip. <laughs> and um, I, she, blogging across fourth grade, or she has some very great blog, and so I looked that up to get some ideas. Um, I also had heard some different webinars on Mystery Skypes, and so um, since Karen was in Hawaii, I thought that would just, and we were both, I was pushing into a third grade class, and she was teaching third grade, I thought it would be a great, um, really fun activity to do a mystery video call. And Heather, and, just yeah. to add in here, at the school where I was working, um, Skype was blocked. So we actually had to find a way to do it differently than through Skype. And so that was where Google Hangout came in. Oh, okay, good. Um, I also uh, just, we wanted, I know, to mention that both of our classes that were involved came from schools that um, were higher than 90% free or reduced lunch. And so this was, uh, for me, it was an urban setting. Um, that students really did not have a ton of technology in their um, in their houses, but it's starting to. I think with the smartphones, I think people are starting to get more technology. But we are, I believe, my school might even be 97% free or reduced lunch. Um, and then before I really go into sort of what we did, I we wanted to mention that it really did not take a huge commitment of time um, to actually do this project. So, one I of the think things that was nice about it not taking a lot of time is that it was stretched out over many months. You know, we didn't decide to do it within just a couple of weeks. We decided to take a, a span of time so that we could squeeze in those small time windows. Okay. Um, the first thing that we did, and I will actually, I will um, share my screen in just a second because after we did our project, I created a Weebly, and so I'll show you some pictures, sort of, of the steps that we did. But the first thing that we did, or the first thing we needed to know, was we needed to notice the time difference. And since Hawaii and Michigan had a huge time difference. Um, it was a little bit challenging. I would start in the morning, or let's see, I, no, it was, Karen was in the morning, I was at the end of the, our school day. And so we, 
did first some test calls and then this way students could get a feel for what it would be like and then it also gave Karen and I our time a time to really work out some of the technical um, kinks that we came across. Um, yeah. I know on our side um, some of the preparation because I was working with a gen ed teacher what she would do when I was not pushed into the classroom is she um, did some practicing um, before we actually did a call and she would think of a state and then she would have students practice um, asking questions to figure out what her state was and uh, if you want was there anything like um, before you actually did the call that you would do, Karen? Yes, we did. We have a smart board in our room, and um, I love technology, even though it's limited uh, at that particular campus. But we used a continent geography lesson um, over a few days, and then we did look at maps. We did some other group, small group work, <clears throat> where I taught the kids about globes and just basic geography and then talked about different places in our country um, and specifically looked at the Hawaiian Islands and compared those to places like Alaska and can you know and, and the lower 48 sorry that's an Alaska term <laughs> Alaskans call it the lower 48 Hawaiians call it the mainland right so, um, so yes we did we definitely did some prep for sure Okay, um, so I will now um, screen share. Let's see. Um, oh, here it is. Sorry. <laughs> okay, can you see this? Can you see my screen? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so like I said, this, um, and does it say expanding the classroom walls? Yes. Yes, it does. I was muted. I I'm, I'm, wanted to say welcome okay. to Richard. <laughs> Okay, uh, so like I said, this was this website, so this Weebly was actually created after uh, we did our mystery Skype, but it will, I'll just quickly show you, um, it sort of is the process. So this was expanding the classroom walls, and we really, I looked at the Common Core and picked a few, with speaking, listening, writing, the standards that we were, we were, um, hitting upon by doing this and then this shows that at this point we did not know or the students did not know where um, where they were we were going to be calling to since it was a mystery video call but here are some pictures of Karen's class and then here were some pictures of our class and this was I, I purposely put these pictures because obviously it shows <clears throat> and we did do it um, I believe we started, um, Karen, did we start in the winter? Yeah, yeah, I think it was yeah. January, maybe? That's right, yes, we, because we really brainstormed our ideas and then we decided, and we did a lot of the prep, you know, some of the prep work and then we decided after Christmas would be when we came back, that's when we would do the actual call. Mm -hmm. um, so this shows my school and the all the snow. We had a very snowy winter last year. Um, so it does say a month of preparation, and this was, I believe, Karen. This was the map you used, correct? Yeah. Yeah, we had that one for each student. Okay. And then in the third grade class, I was pushing into the teacher had these laminated maps and so she just would take it out every once in a while and start talking about um, just geography and different features of all the all the states and um, let's see 
Um, so after we did the preparation, then it was time for the mystery video call. Um, and I'll have Karen describe the actual the technology that was used uh, in her classroom. But I wanted to also mention that you can actually do a mystery video call in segments. And I can't remember, Karen, did we do two or did we do one? We did one main one. But it was those test calls prior that I think you should count them as, as you know, included. So right. maybe I would do it at least two. And then on a personal level, there was a couple times that you and I quickly just tested the school site availability and made sure that worked initially. Okay, right. And then if you didn't have time um, to do the mystery call in all one chunk, I think that as long as you keep the maps and they're kept in like a safe place until the state was guessed, the kids could keep it in a folder and you could really ask, you know, have the students maybe ask just a couple questions um, or like half the class asked their questions and then, you know, another day you could do it. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that works. Um, for me, the technology in my room was very limited. The internet connection was, there was a lot of buffering issues all of last year. It has improved since then because our school recently has become um, a part of that one-to-one -one, uh, initiative where we will soon have many iPads which we're all very excited about. So they had to bump up and improve the uh, internet connection. But you can see in this picture that the computer on that little girl's desk, that's my personal computer because it had a video camera. My work computer did not. Um, the other glitch that we ran into that it just happened to work um, itself out was that the buffering caused the audio to be very choppy and we could not hear each other so I had like this older Android phone and some classroom speakers and so it just happened that I could plug my speakers into the Android phone and then Heather and I um, actually used our cell phones for the audio and that was that worked really well because the kids could ask their question and you can see this little girl is holding a strip of paper so every child had a specific question that, that, that they would get to ask um, and so the technology glitch, glitches were real but we were fortunate that we were able to just figure out a way to get through it. Um, I think nowadays this big push for technology use in the classroom is causing, oh, how do we say it? Like people are wanting to use the top notch stuff that's out there, but the reality is that many, many, many schools have limitations or many people have limitations even within their knowledge base. But you can work it out. And I think this is a good time for me to just acknowledge my sister, who is Heather. You know, we happen to be siblings and in the same career, so she was my go-to person. And if anybody is new in this um, type of use of technology, it, it's really important to have somebody that they can go to to really make it successful. Uh, because without the security of knowing that I could say, oh, hey, when I turn on Google Hangout, what button do I push? or what do I have to um, open up to get this to work? And so that is a key for future projects as instructors and educators are learning how to use technology to have that support in place. Definitely. And it changes too. So it's never 100%, even though you know, you think you know everything. Right. Yeah. I wanted to ask a question. Are you? Uh, I, I don't know if you're finished with your presentation, but what about the smarty pants person in the front that wants knows the answer and wants to tell? How do you handle that <laughs> before they're supposed to? Well, I was the general ed teacher in my room. Um, I wasn't pushing in, so I had had um, lots of open discussion, you know, before this ever happened. And so we did acknowledge that even if your team, oh, and the kids were broken into teams, so even if your team knew the answer, they had to quietly come to the, one of the adults in the room and see if they were right. And then once there was a consensus, then Heather, why don't you describe how your kids did it? And were you going to show that little clip of the video? Um, yeah, yep, I will. Um, before I go down to um, show what my classroom looked like, I just wanted to mention on this one where the girl is looking at the globe, um, that right behind, <coughs> there. these were some of the questions, um, and so Karen had written those on the board, 
Like, are you east of the Mississippi? Do you border a Great Lake? Do you border an ocean? So those were sort of some of the questions that we were um, asking. But down here, oh, this was um, this is what my classroom looked like, and I um, so we did not have a smart board, but we had an Elmo, and so I had put my laptop or the work laptop um, into the Elmo so it was up on the screen and then I also um, I put let's see I think actually I wrote it in here um, okay so the computers in my room were muted also and then the cell phone speaker call was used a speaker call was used for the audio um, to deal with the poor commu the computer audio and lag and then so my laptop was plugged into the Elmo um, so the whole class could see it and then the phone was plugged into the overhead speakers and so I didn't have like a little tiny um, set of, of uh, speakers but I did have the overhead speakers and so I just put my my phone into that uh, so here's a question here's another question what is the major crop of your state um, and then there was another example is your state landlocked and so you can see in this picture I was pretty much right over the students uh, and because the audio because students at this point this was the first video call they really were very quiet um, when they would speak and so they would ask their question but then I would usually repeat it um, so it was a little bit louder mm -hmm. and then obviously this one this question where it said what is the major crop of your state um, and Karen, whoever the student was that answered that, um, when they said pineapple, that was a dead giveaway. <laughs> so <laughs> that is how we knew that Karen was in Hawaii, but we waited. Um, and I'll show you a little video clip of the kids, and you can see how excited they are. But I also wanted to show this picture because I had to listen very hard, and I did repeat um, student questions when it was needed. Um, or I would repeat what Karen's students had said. So here's some, um, and this video, Expanding Classroom Walls, I'm sure, Linda, you'll probably add that into the class notes, correct? Yes. yes. Actually, okay. I, I think I might have given you um, rights to, to add to the notes. Oh, and this, awesome. Uh, okay. Good, good time for me to say what the, uh, what the address is. Is it's at the bottom of my uh, lower third. It's a Bitly link gr46 notes, and so I believe I gave you editing rights, Heather. Okay, I will. Uh, I'll make sure I add that website um, because this um, there's just a few videos that you can see a little bit more of the process. But I will um, see if I can play a few seconds of this. Okay, and Michelle said uh, that she has added the the Weebly to the notes and your tips. So oh, okay, thank great. You, thank yeah. you. Okay, um, so this is the little video clip. Um, sorry, it's very blurry. I think it's because I made it so big on the Weebly. If I made it a smaller video clip, it might be better, but we'll try. Okay. Were you able to see that? Yes. Okay. So uh, the reason why I wanted to show that is just because it just shows how exciting, you know, yeah. how excited the students were. <laughs> and it was the same because after we had guessed it, um, then I believe Car the class, Karen's class, um, you guys had uh, guessed also, correct, that we were in Michigan? Yeah. 
very quickly after that. So it, it was very, very fun. Oh my gosh, it was so much fun. And the kids just loved it. And, you know, the build up over the various lessons really um, spurred on that excitement. But it was such a valuable thing to do. <laughs> and so after that was finished, and um, we thought, okay, well, we don't want to just stop and, and end it at that. So we decided to add um, a blog to to a blog part or a blog page to this Weebly, and um, we let's see. Oh, yeah, it's coming up slowly. Okay, so we thought that. Um, a blog would be just a great way to continue to share unique aspects of our different cultures. Uh, and right around then, we happen to both be taking a field trip. So, let's see. And this was in January. And so what we did was... Um, let, oh, it was in February. Okay, so we did a few blogs about how we and our thoughts about the mystery video call. And then this was when, in February, we both did our field trip. So at the bottom, um, this is where, Karen, you went on a field trip, correct? Yeah. Yeah. We went and saw okay. a bird conservation um, place here on the Big Island. <clears throat> And then what we ended up doing, we went and learned uh, about the Native Americans who um, used to l or who live here. And so we just posted some videos. And then what I would do is this really was a blog that was sort of whole class, um, and I would pull up the videos uh, or the pictures that Karen put on and I would show it whole class um, just briefly usually in the last 15 minutes right before lunch or 10 minutes before lunch or right before they would leave at the end of the day and like I said it was only a couple it was really only a couple days um, since this was the first you know the first time that we did it um, March and April passed very quickly with no activities on the blog. So you can see right here, you can see January, February, and then it was May. Um, so about that time, and we also, I think I had some map testing. I was doing some major testing in there. And um, so we were very, very busy where we didn't touch the blog at all. I love um, how you documented everything, though, so that we, we can go back sorry. now and look at it. Um, yeah. Heather was just saying how we didn't go back and touch it, but I do want to just interject here that the kids would ask me uh, frequently, when are we going to look at the blog, or aren't we going to talk to Michigan again? So it, was, it really impacted them, and they did not forget during those months. We were just standardized testing, doing other busy, busy things. You know how it is. So. Um, then I think maybe it was about May that I taught Karen how to upload videos from her phone to YouTube um, and then be able to post them on the Weebly. And so then this is w what started more video clips to be shared. And so it was, and it was really sort of wrapping up also, I think, the end of the year. Let me see. I'm going to scroll all the way down real quick. Um, yeah, it was, oh, it was like May 14th. That's right, because Karen, you were out. Uh, when was your last day? Was oh, like, that was a long time ago. <laughs> the yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so we we knew we had about two weeks before the end of the year, and we didn't want to just drop it. So yeah. Karen, um, you had done the Hawaiian morning chant, and that was on your phone. So I think I just said, okay, well, let's figure out how to upload it um, onto YouTube. And so then these are. It was neat because the chant that the students did, I showed that to my students, and then Karen had put the translation of the words, and that was that um, the students really liked seeing that. Um, and then uh, 
we posted or Karen posted a video made with iMovie um, and that prompted me to ha make an iMovie with my students and it was these are these were showing that no matter what part of the country or what part of the world we live in that we all have similar expectations for behavior and learning yeah. and so um, let's see I'll just show a little clip if it yeah So that was, I just wanted to show like the beginning of it um, and then my, this little class. And so it w we really um, just wanted to sh show the two videos of expectations that they were actually quite, or they were the same. <laughs> yeah, it was really neat. It was very cool. This makes me yeah. want to do it all over again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, now um, what about the piece with Anna White in Alaska? There was there was a third teacher. Oh say? yeah. Let me um, yeah. just. I'll try to wrap this up real quick because then. Oh, um, Oh, that's okay. So we just were doing some more videos, and Karen had a chameleon eating uh, fruit flies. That was so very cool for the kids. And then the May Day fifth, uh, the May Day celebration. So we were really still just sh uh, we were able to see what Hawaiian culture was like. Um, the last thing we tried to do was we tried to have the students contribute to the blog. And so this was done in individually by um, Michigan students and then whole class by Karen students. And in Michigan, we just picked a post. Back here, we decided we were just going to pick the one um, that was with the crows. And you can see right down here that there are 41 comments. And so what I did was um, I went in one day and briefly taught them how to leave a comment, and the comments were submitted, um, but then they had to be approved by me before they sh they were showed up or they were showing up on the blog. I had to approve it. Um, two students at a time were allowed to two, to use two very ancient desktop computers that ran really slow but they were able to just complete the job of leaving a blog comment and I just pretty much said I, I left it wide open and said okay make a comment on anything that um, you were wondering about Hawaii and so um, this shows what it was like and I really didn't talk much about um, capitalization or anything I just wanted them to start start um, you know, writing, getting a thought out there. And so, Karen, if you want to quickly say how what you guys did. Yeah, um, I think we can improve in this area for sure because we then would pull it up in whole class very quickly. We would try to answer five or six questions. Um, I think the improvement could be utilizing maybe, I think, Heather, is it called kidblog.org and maybe setting yes. up between two students for future. And that way, it's not taking up instructional time, and the kids could be using it a um, few minutes here and there, maybe when they've completed something. or There's just lots of other ways. Or maybe even from home, um, lots of options if they are set up on their own individual blog pages. Okay. Um, and then also one comment. I think I can, I can stop sharing if I remember how to do this. Um, did I stop? Am I back? Uh, uh, 
that she's just gone, but I just see her name. There, oh, that's me. I think you're sharing oh. me. So uh, click on the green there box on the left with the white arrow one more time. And I you should okay. There you are. Okay. All right. Um, so one, I will, when students, I think for this year, uh, if we do it again, if students are individually blogging, I have heard and I can see that there's an increased um, amount of pride in their writing and then that is when they start looking at, wait, someone's reading my stuff, um, not that is just my teacher, and so then they want to have capitals and periods and have good, good writing out there. Um, yeah, so, and I think we talked about the kid blog, so I think we'll probably um, have a link there so they will be individually blogging. And I think that, you know, the last thing, it was just so much fun, and it made teaching a lot of fun, and the students loved it. So I'm excited to find a fifth grade teacher. Um, I think I might have one that we can do it again. Cool. Neat. Good. Okay, and did you want me to briefly share about the piece with Anna? Yes, please. Okay, so we also then included a teacher in Alaska. This was more in my classroom, not in Heather's. Um, this, and my, one of my personal focuses as the teacher of our side was to really highlight cultural things and to share our cultures. Um, my friend in Alaska is a Russian old believer, and it's a, another very unique culture that is separate from the main community of the town that I lived in and they had their own community about 25 miles out of town very very remote they did do have electricity and they do have internet but they have religious beliefs that um, prevented the younger students from using technology if the teacher was um, directing it and supporting it that was acceptable but it was very limited so what Anna ended up doing with our classes is she would um, make PowerPoints and we shared those back and forth but um, so so we were sharing culture but then I was also teaching my students how in um, uh, technology is really critical and important in our world but it's also just as important to know how to write a friendly letter and to use paper and to use the regular mail services of our country so we sent boxes uh, back and forth, and the students wrote letters, and they did the same mystery, um, I guess you would call it mystery letter, <laughs> where we sent, I think it took three times back and forth for the kids to figure out where they were writing letters to. And so the kids were giving hints, and they drew pictures and things like that. And it was, it was very exciting and fun for them to have that piece as well. We also sent, like, within the boxes, they drew pictures of themselves, and um, we did have the PowerPoint stuff, but they also sent samples, like shells from their beaches and some, some branches and leaves and things like that from their area, and then we reciprocated. We did not send lava, no rocks, <laughs> but I did send some leaves, and, um, oh, I think there was a shell or two that went in a box, but um, I think what it did is it highlighted the importance of technology, but also the appreciation for what we have um, in addition to that. You know, there's such a focus on technology now that I think it's really important to also teach our kids to write a letter and communicate that way. So, any questions about that? That actually sounds like a lot of fun. Oh, it was great. Yeah, yeah. And we had classroom displays and. The kids did little um, cardboard pictures of themselves, and within their culture, not only do they not use technology, but they also have this beautiful um, way of dressing. The girls all wear very colorful, satiny material dresses, and their hair is up and braided. And so, from a cultural lens, that was really neat to see. And of course, May Day, when May Day came around, that was fun. Like our whole class made paper lays and sent them, and. Uh, we did share some uh, of the words for the um, the Oli in the morning that we were doing, that sort of thing. So, yeah, many, many benefits on many levels. And so my friend Anna and I are going to try to do something again as well. She did end up sending a PowerPoint at the very end of the year that wrapped things up um, that we unfortunately didn't get to see because it was too late. So I'm planning on inviting my third graders from last year to my class this year 
uh, the ones that are still at the school, and I'm gonna we're, we'll have a little party and look at that PowerPoint. Yeah, very valuable stuff, and I think what I really wanted to point out from my experience doing this is that technology use is where we're headed. It's not going away. Um, and for the newbie teacher, it's really nice to have the support, but then also to start small. Pick something small and, and just go for it and see what happens. Great. Uh, very successful what it did. Well, it sounds really neat. Michelle, I know you have a question or two. You have a question, Michelle? Um, well, I just want to say I'm really impressed with how you folks rolled it out, and I hope it's okay, Heather. As you were talking, I took notes because in the show notes because um, these were things that um, I guess we kind of learned the hard way. But it sounds like you folks were really good at anticipating. So wait, I just want to look at it really quick, Linda. Um, I was so impressed too. I linked to Pernil's blog, and oh, I also put in. Um, when we did a mystery hangout with a school in Minnesota, um, the, gen the tech coordinator, Darren Swenson, gave us a, a page of mystery Skype tips, which can translate to mystery hangout. Really good mm -hmm. tips. So I linked that. I loved what you folks said, too, to really pay attention to time, because um, lots of people get hung up on the time difference. But like you said, if you can find a workaround, you know, then you're working, you find workarounds for technology and time and um, just lots of things. So I thought that was great. I also loved how you folks actually took the time to do test calls so the kids could have time to practice. And um, you know what, let me, I'm going to share what we did wrong. When our, because our kids had practice, but when our fourth grade class began the mystery hangout, they started this way. Aloha. And right away, the school in Minnesota knew who we were. They were like all laughing, kind of quiet on their end. But <laughs> that was really funny. And then, Linda, I had a really weird thing happen today. So I think that one of the, just as Karen, you were saying, technology is so prevalent, it's not going away. I think we always need to be ready for glitches. And today, our fifth grade class was hanging out with the author, Roseanne Perry. And we were, she had agreed to do a live hangout. So it was streaming live to YouTube, and the first student came up and answered, asked her a question, and she answered. And Linda, the weirdest thing is that then we heard her answer again, and we heard her answer again. And she said, what's going on? I'm not repeating the answer. But um, Google Hangout was replaying the audio of, not the video piece, but just the audio of the live Hangout. And I thought, we've been in so many live Google Rocks, so I'm not sure what was happening. Has that ever happened to you, Linda? It hasn't happened to me, but uh, I'm not surprised. You can never tell what's going to go. Exactly. Yeah, that's so, so true. And wait, sorry. Uh, Linda knows I talk too much, but I love how you chronicled it in the Weebly because that's one thing we didn't do a good job of doing, and you folks did an amazing job so other people can come to the Weebly and see your steps, and the pictures and videos are so powerful. So it's just really fun what you folks have done. Thank you. I really want to give Heather the credit for that. Because again, I was the newbie of this team, <laughs> and she is just so good at technology. So uh, uh, just to stress, if you're going to jump in and try something new, it's super awesome to have some support of some kind. You know, Karen, I'm glad you said that, because I stopped myself from talking. But um, then you know what? I think I want to give you credit, too, because there are some teachers who are willing to jump on board and try new things, even if they don't really know how it's going to work. And there's some of us, um, I have to say, I'm kind of shy and hesitant. And if I hadn't done these hangouts with Linda, I don't know if I would jump into them with students. Because sometimes, you know, we feel that responsibility for things to go OK. But um, anyway, today the kids saw that things might not work out the way we planned. And I'm sure you had that along the way, too. So I think credit to both of you. Well, thank you. And I, I agree with that, because um, you know, just the fact that that you were willing to, I needed someone to do it with, <laughs> and you were willing to do it. So, um, I also I think that with technology not working, I think to that's a great lesson for students to see because in the few years while I've been trying to figure out how to use iPads and work with my group. Uh, they would see me frustrated quite a bit when technology wouldn't work. 
And I would always say, but that's okay because in life things don't always work out good. And what it, it's what you do when things don't work that is the important thing. So I think that even when technology doesn't work, and I try to tell this to teachers in my school, that that in itself is a learning experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, that was fantastic. I wanted to say um, Richard is here. Hi, Richard. Richard works at our school. He's at Seabury Hall. Let's see if you can, we can hear you, Richard. I want to make sure. Are you on the Seabury Hall account? Okay, I don't hear you. Hello, Richard. Okay, this is what the trouble we had last time with the Seabury Hall account. We might have to re-invite uh, Richard on. Could you try it with, oh wait, no. He's doing something. All righty. Um, Richard <laughs> is here, and maybe we'll hear from him soon. But he has a, um, an idea for a student exchange slash online project, and I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um, and hopefully we'll find out. Speaking of technology not working, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know it was going to be this quick that we would be models for what happens when it fails. <laughs> I think while could... go ahead, Heather. While he's working, I just wanted to mention. Um, Michelle, when you were doing the Google Google Hangout today, did you have only one Google Hangout open, or did you? Because when I was listening to one, I somehow had like a the YouTube video popped up also, and I was getting two. I was getting some kind of feedback, and I was listening to two. That's a really good point. I appreciate what you're saying. And you know, maybe because I got a little nervous, I got flustered, I didn't see it. I thought I checked, you know, other windows or tabs or I had closed things previously. It seemed to be just um, coming from the actual Hangout window itself. And okay. actually the other really strange thing was tonight, I shut down my computer like I always do when I left school and I came home and I... Um, turned my computer back on, and as soon as I clicked the Chrome app, the Hangout started playing again. But um, I hadn't clicked play any place, so I thought, oh, maybe there's like, like a ghost in my computer, or something. <laughs> a oh, many hoony. No. <laughs> it could be a glitch on their part, and sometimes they're doing, you know, maintenance and this. Yeah, oh, yeah that's true. Hi, Richard. Are you in with your Gmail account now, Richard? Let's see. Oh, yay. You can hear me. We can hear you. Yay. Magic. Yay. magic. So. Okay, this is Richard Bailey. He's a Seabury Hall um, Languages Department Chair. And um, I know almost nothing about what he's going to present, so I hope it's all legal and good. <laughs> um, I'm sure it is. It's so why don't you tell me a little bit more about yourself, Richard? tell us and then uh, tell us what you have in mind. Well, I'm first um, amazed that Heather's awake at this time of night. So um, <laughs> I, it's, it's actually, actually what, it's almost 8 o'clock and I'm falling asleep. So, <laughs> <laughs> But um, anyway, I'm, I'm the Spanish, I'm a Spanish teacher here at Seabury and I've got a background in international education. I worked at Leeward Community College on the island of Oahu for uh, about nine years and led study abroad programs. And at the same time, I've, I've had a long fascination with, uh, with technology. Um, and thinking of the idea of marrying the two, um, I, I started fantasizing many years ago before Google Hangouts or Google Classroom, or even I knew about Moodle, uh, about the idea of sending cohorts of students abroad to do entire semesters or entire years in another country while still maintaining their status at a, uh, as a student at an institution. Um, and um, I've underlined that in the past uh, few weeks because we've had uh, three students come back from a year abroad. Uh, one student was in Italy, 
another was in the Czech Republic, and another student was in um, Spain. And they come back with so much more presence and so much more profundity or depth than um, many of our students who just don't leave the island. The problem that they've faced is that they've missed um, some of the core credits, some of the core classes that they need in order to, uh, to, to graduate from the school and thus are having to, having to do some extra work. And also they miss some of the SAT prep classes, so their SAT, course, their, their SAT scores might not be as high as um, one would want them to be. So my, my proposal would be to send cohorts of students, or actually perhaps, and this is all based on resources, abroad to different institutions, but in groups, so that they would spend a semester or a year studying uh, perhaps at a high school in another country, um, perhaps um, at a language school, but then they would also be taking uh, a series of courses at their home institution, at their home high school, while they're abroad, be a distance education, be using Moodle, using Google Classroom. Uh, it, I, I think that we're, we're finding out that whether we're sending a box with letters, like, as you did with Alaska, or you're connecting with Google uh, Hangouts or Skype um, with Hawaii, uh, the the tools vary, but the effect is the same, and we just have to learn how to do the how to use the different tools. That would be my fantasy. The problems, of course, uh, are economic. It'd be expensive, but um, it, uh, like I said, this is a fantasy and not uh, not anything more than that yet. But in my perfect world, that would be the the culminating experience of my professional life to to be able to see something like that come to fruition. Well, I'm thinking that if someone is listening, they might be interested and might know, you know, might be interested as well. You never can tell who's out there. Yeah. For sure. That's a great idea. Uh, yeah, we did, I, I don't know if I told you, Richard, but we had those three girls on Google Rocks, and that was one of my favorite shows Michelle remembers as well, yeah. and Jody as well. They, um, those girls are... Um, Amazing, uh, the things that they had to go through to survive, really, um, in a, a foreign country, and then they ended up, or foreign to us, and then they ended up not wanting to come back because, um, yeah, they loved it. Uh, they loved the freedom of being able to travel, no homework. That was huge. Yes. No homework. Um, and actually, a more stringent education, a more of a lecture type. But they didn't seem to mind that um, yeah. because there was no homework <laughs> that seemed to be recurring. Uh, what a rich experience for them! And coming back, I do. I talk to all of them, and you're right. They they have changed. They are um, much more worldly than us, and they, uh, it took them a while just to get used to getting being back. Mm -hmm. uh, and even the way they carry themselves, you know that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Quite an experience that they have just grown beyond. Yeah, it's absolutely. I saw Kyla the first day of classes, and I, I I saw her from a distance, and I was wondering who that new teacher was. Uh, oh. <laughs> she she had the, the the she carried herself like an adult already. Was she not not at all like a, a seventeen year old girl? Um, so I. I would love to see something like this happen. Uh, it would take uh, a school with resources uh, to be able to pull this off in a student body with resources to start the model for it. Um, perhaps a grant would help something like this happen. But I in this day and age, we, we see that, uh, that uh, we can connect to other countries and other places, other regions using technology, but nothing replaces the experience of actually being immersed in the culture. Um, right. So the perfect in a perfect world, uh, the I would like to see the technology used to stay in touch with home rather than um, merely opening the doors to uh, a wider world to those who are uh, who are at home. Right. Fantastic. You know, what comes to mind too, um, Richard, is that there are a lot of programs that already exist for high school students that are virtual online programs. So, for instance, um, there's a Florida virtual program and uh, I know they said that many of their students are in Florida, but they actually have students all over the world. And then, of course, um, I think you folks have probably heard the same commercials I've heard on TV for the K-12 
um, company. Uh, I don't know how I feel exactly about them, but anyway, they they exist. Uh -huh. And um, I guess I was wondering, are you hoping that teachers at Seabury Hall would create online versions of their courses that would meet the credits, or were you hoping to kind of, um, um, I don't know what the right word is, but you know, um, opt out or bring in other programs? or? Well, ideally, I'd like to see it be um, a, a Seabury Hall experience. A student would go abroad as a Seabury Hall student and not lose their identity as a Seabury Hall student, all the while being in another country. Uh, and in order to do that, yes, the teachers here at Seabury Hall would be creating the the courses and, and adapting their content, uh, their their face-to-face uh, -face content to an online format. Um, it, it could even be, if it's a semester, it would be half of a year. Uh, that's how I see it, but it's the kind of model that, uh, since it's, it's not even a not even a zygote, it's a uh, it's something that could go in any direction. Um, and students who are or are taking distance classes and possibly being somewhat homeschooled by their parents, they could spend time abroad, even live on a sailboat, uh, That's right. and, and be able to connect. Well, let me know when it happens, when you get your grant, because I have a language arts certification, and I just helped roll out a blended learning program at our school, so I'm ready. <laughs> nice. Very good, very good. Yeah. Awesome. Do you have any questions of uh, Richard, Heather, and Karen? Um, um, I, I answered. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Karen, I said, go, ahead. go ahead. I said that the questions that I did kind of have were answered, and um, I think it's a wonderful idea. I've taken many online college courses, and they work well. And my son, right now, who's a senior in high school, is taking some online classes along with his regular coursework. And you know that there, it's that's another thing that's in our world that is not going away. So yeah. I think you keep keep don't make it just a fantasy. Make it happen somehow. <laughs> well, we'll cross our fingers. Um, yeah. I have a question for you, Karen. Then, if your if your kids are taking online classes with your college, um, what is the format? It's not the MOOC format. It's more of a, a, a one, smaller, more intimate class. Uh, well, the one that my son is taking is called um, Odyssey. It's just I think it's all over the dist or the complexes on the islands. Mm -hmm. um, and then, what was the other part? Or I just personally took college courses when I was going to school that okay. were online because I lived in a remote area of Alaska. So, mm -hmm. and that was just in the last, you know, over the last like six years. Uh -huh. um, and that was Blackboard. I was familiar with Moodle as well. Uh -huh. so, but you know, we have all these technology natives now. These kids are growing up with this stuff, so yeah. um, it's gonna it's second nature to them. Truly, it is. Yeah. Something that boggled my mind five years ago, <laughs> you know, these kids just just jump right in with both feet and think it's normal. Yeah, it's, Actually, it's the principles adapt to everything, and I've I've yeah. taught my students over the past three days how to in how to uh, obtain embed code and how to, to how to access the source and embed uh, audio in a forum in Moodle. So <laughs> it's like, oh. wow, you guys picked this up in two days. This is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I want to say too. You know, um, when I was first involved with creating courses in Blackboard for um, Hawaii Virtual Learning, mm -hmm. their philosophy was to really do that type of substitution, where whatever we would do in the face-to-face -face classroom, we would substitute and put online. So, you know, um, upload worksheets the students could download and have all the narration, the text there. Um, but I think that um, it's changed just so quickly in the past couple of years. So another thing I'd look at with, as you're doing your research to present to the folks at Seabury Hall, the professors, is to look at Coursera. I just took a class with um, the Exploratorium out of San Francisco, and I was amazed with how um, little text they put on their site. And instead they had video, and then we connected via Google Hangout, and they had forums where we interacted. So it was really a participatory course where the participants were contributing to the discussions and guiding the learning. And there isn't as much um, upfront legwork from the online professor then. It's not like you have to transfer your whole course. You can really learn and use the technology differently when you're using online tools. So I think the best thing might just be to explore some Coursera courses too. Okay, nice. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, 
I just wanted to quickly mention two things. Uh, I was lucky enough, it was at college, not high school, but I was able to go over to Austria and um, do a semester in Austria. And so I did tons of, it was the second semester that that program was available, so we did not have a library. And um, that was before technology, before Wi-Fi was available to really to us that we were using it. So they let us travel and have three day week three day weekends um, because they f they felt that just traveling we would learn um, more. And that was probably one of the most educational experiences of my life, and it really made me uh, my eyes open up. So I. I think that it would have been really neat, um, like in today's world, if we would have been able to stay connected to the school back in Ohio. Um, so that I think that's a great idea. Um, and then also with the blended, I just uh, was an instructor, uh, a Blick instructor, which was blended learning in the classroom um, last semester. And uh, uh, Michelle, what you were saying about the forums, that was mostly also what we were doing. Um, there would be like a little video clip, a little lesson, but then we would, um, all the participants would really add to the forum and add examples. And that was a great way that we were all learning from each other. How many people were participating in that at, at, at one time? Um, let's see, I believe, well, we, we had two instructors, mm -hmm. uh, per group, and we had, I think we had about 600 teachers, um, this past year in Michigan who did it, but in my instructor group, it, we started out with maybe about 16 teachers who were learning from us and we got down to I think about eight completed the course but like I said that was my little group yeah. um, but there were many groups all over Michigan okay interesting cool nice. wow lots of possibilities I love it that um, well, uh, two groups came on well Richard's a group all by himself and <laughs> and Heather and Karen is a group and um, so different in your approaches to online and what that means and connecting and what that means and I think that is the key you know whatever is um, you want to do in your classroom and beyond would be unique to you so um, lots of possibilities and I, I really enjoyed learning about um, what you um, have shared with us today both of us both of both groups both projects any uh, we're at the top of the hour, so we usually keep this to an hour. Any parting um, thoughts or reflection or um, anything from anyone? Or Heather, yep. thank you Sorry, again, Linda. Heather, for staying up. <laughs> Heather, oh, looks yeah. Like yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Um, I just went, I had another thought. I, I found out in a roundabout way that there's a teacher right now from Mililani High School who's um, developing um, on how, a how to teach AP Physics online course through Hawaii Virtual Learning. So, you know, I would think that physics, AP Physics, would be very hard to do in an AP course, but he's um, creating this course right now in Blackboard, and I'm not sure when it will be available. But you know, Richard, if, if that's something that you might be interested in, I have this contact information just to find out when is the course available or if your teachers could even take this course. So it's, it's in the Blackboard setting. And then, Linda, I just want to mention in the show notes, I did put some other, um, if people were inspired, and I'm sure they were, by Heather and Karen tonight, then there's some great um, global collaborations coming up. So in September, right around September 15th, is International Dot Day. And that's really for anybody. I don't think it needs to be just for elementary. And then in um, November, or I'm sorry, uh, September, October is the Global Read Aloud, which is also founded and coordinated by Pernil Rip, who Heather mentioned earlier. Um, in the spring, there's a vir virtual poetry summit. And remember, Linda, we're in charge of the West Coast version of it now. We're bringing oh, we it I didn't yes, know across the Pacific. I okay. volunteered you. Thanks. I told Alyssa that we would do it. <laughs> 
So, I love um, Alyssa. I'll do anything for Alyssa. She's so great. I just wanted to um, make a plug for the show notes. That's it. Yeah. Yes. Yes, in the show notes we have some links. I actually put one in about uh, Lucy Gray's uh, global educational uh, uh, activities. She and Steve Hargadon work together to do conferences and all kinds of activities. So that is in the show notes as well. Again, GR 46 notes, a bit.ly link. Um, okay, anything else? Yeah, oh, I'd like you. to make a final comment from me that if anybody has watched this uh, recorded version and uh, would like to connect with me, um, I'm not sure how if they can do that, but I'd be happy to connect like through our Google accounts and uh, using the Google Hangout and having the actual video option for the kids was phenomenal. Like that really is a big piece of bringing up that excitement and making it really fun. But um, I'd be happy to offer my thoughts and uh, support to anybody out there who might need it. That's fantastic. Thank you. And that's how it all works. Yeah, we just learn from each other. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Another great show, cl Global Collaboration. And just a tip of the iceberg here, because as we said, there's so many things that you can do. And thank you very much for sharing um, your ideas on it. And Heather, you can go to sleep now. Good night. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so right. much. This is the second time Heather has come on. And she's in Michigan, <laughs> and it is, what, 2 o'clock right now? And yet she has something at 8 o'clock that she has to be at. So yes. well, now I start work tomorrow, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to join anymore now that my summer is over. <laughs> uh, really appreciate you coming on. Really <laughs> Thank <good>. you. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we're at the top of the hour, a little past, so we're going to say aloha for, uh, for now, and we'll see you next week. And thanks again, Heather, Karen, uh, Richard, and Michelle, our regular, for coming on and making um, Google Rock so much fun. Cool. So without further ado, we'll say aloha, aloha. See you next week. Bye-bye.